does not necessarily produce another good preacher. Amen? Amen. I know a few preachers that would like their son to follow in their footsteps and be in their ministry like himself, but they have chosen another path. George Washington did not produce another president of the United States. Abraham Lincoln did not produce a son who followed the path to the White House. God blessed Abraham on the preposition that he would bless his children. And you know, that's what I like about the Lord. He will not only bless us, but he'll bless our children. God wishes to bless us as families for generations. Mm -hmm. Elisha caught the idea. He wanted a double portion of what Elijah had. I believe in a financial heritage. I believe in a spiritual heritage. Mm -hmm. This is how generations should be. A son and a daughter's desire should be twice as much as their father and mother's. Permanent prosperity rests heavily on the family unity. See, the Lord can't prosper you as a family if the family is constantly bickering and fighting and quarreling and separating. He works with a family that is moving in unity. So if a family is not strongly united, prosperity becomes a one generation operation or less. Parents must train their children to work for and value prosperity. In the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, in the 40th verse, it reads, You shall keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days upon the earth, which the Lord your God gives you forever. Now you have to have prosperity with a purpose. And Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter in the 40, 40th verse, includes a family principle for learning prosperity. Live right as a family. Then you will prosper together as a family. God is a God of plenty. He manufactures wealth, and we should too. Amen? Amen. I'm married to build a family to have children, that those children would be blessed and they would bless others. We want to bless multitudes. Prosperity is not a selfish thing. When it is, it causes and ceases to be prosperity. Now let's talk about prosperity in generations, because God is getting ready to prosper us Amen this morning. And he's prepping us with his word to show us how to keep it once he gives it to us. Because usually when a family becomes prosperous in our time, it lasts for one generation. Mm -hmm. Now the children are not trained in prosperity. They think it is automatic. Children must work hard for the prosperity or they will destroy all you made because they got it without earning it. Some families pass their prosperity into a third generation. Families dissolve and have nothing. Children are not taught that prosperity is to stay in the family and is based on firm laws from God in a relationship with Him. Marshall Field of Chicago lasted through two generations but the third generation sold the business because they were not interested. Children must be brought up to love and respect one another. And often the third generation knows nothing about it. So continuing in prosperity is elusive. And what I mean by that, it is difficult to find or catch or achieve. Mm -hmm. Now royalty in Europe, I have observed that royalty are taught to succeed to the throne. 
one generation after another. However, they must have fine children to do it. So they got to get them all together in preparation, amen, so they can carry this to the next generation like the Lord is teaching us this morning. Because sin and degradation and mischief do not produce fine children. It is integrity and right living that produce good children. Without good heirs, there are no offspring to perpetrate royalty. So great families are taught to sell their land. If they suffer financial hardship, they lease the land. They are still able to hand it down to their children for their prosperity. They learn how to continue their prosperity. And the Lord is showing us here with these examples that as he prepares us for prosperity, we can teach our children to continue and with this prosperity and how to keep it and pass it to their families. Now in our modern world industry, in corporations, prosperity on a continuing basis is very elusive. A family industry can be bought out. A private company can go public. And many families are rich one year and they are poor the next. So God is not poor. I said God is not poor. Amen? Amen. And he's not happy when we are struggling financially. God is interested in your prosperity and that of your children. Mm -hmm. Now the Rockefeller family, I know everybody heard about them. They've made a name for themselves over the years. I read a story about a Japanese boy who said that he worked in a hotel with one of the Rockefeller heirs. Mm -hmm. And the boy's father sent him money for school, but not his spending money. Here was a father disciplining his son to live right and to work hard with the dignity of labor. This is the reason that this family has had prosperity for two or three generations. As the Lord is prepping us for prosperity, he wants to teach us that once we get it, he's showing us how we can keep it. Now the family prosperity has been preserved through learning the value of prosperity by hard work. Another example is the Rothschild family from the ghettos of Poland. They preserved their prosperity by maintaining unity in the time of war. And today it is still a wealthy family. Now let's talk about David's family. In 1 Kings, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse, it reads, as the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son, Solomon. I am going where every man on earth must someday go. I am counting on you to be a strong and worthy successor. Obey the laws of God and follow all his ways. Keep each of his commands written in the law of Moses so that you will prosper in everything you do wherever you turn. If you do this, then the Lord will fulfill the promise he gave me that if my children and their descendants watch their step and are faithful to God, one of them shall always be the king of Israel. My dynasty will never end. If you want prosperity on every side and in every phase of your life, you must know God's way and follow it. We're talking about prospering God's way, not the world's way. You hear of people in the world who have millions and millions of dollars, and yet they commit suicide. But when you prosper God's way, you're not going to commit suicide because you're going to walk in his way and do what he wants you to do according to his word. Amen? Amen. 
See, God wants to balance you out. When the Lord pro prospers us, it's not in one area. It's not just finances. It's in every area. Mm -hmm. A nation needs good families to be prosperous. The children must know and serve God to have perpetual prosperity. You've got to put your family first. And I'm a believer of that. Amen? You have to make time for your family. You have to be a leader that your family can look up to and follow. See, something's wrong with a man or a woman that gives all of their life to their work and their own pleasure and nothing to their family. And a person that does that, they're going to ruin their own family because they don't have time for them. That's why children go every which way, get in all kind of trouble, end up in drugs, end up in prison because they didn't make time for their family. And the Lord is all about the family. And he wants us to make time for family. See, your family has to come first. Your family must become a strong unit and be powerful. Whatever you do, pass your knowledge on to your family. And that's what John and I do. We pass our knowledge unto our kids. Amen? So they can learn how to walk in God's way. Learn how to please Him. Continue in His Word so that He can give them long life and prosper them. See, we cannot have a good business without a good home or a good man or a good woman. These are ingredients of personal prosperity. In the book of 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, in the seventh verse, it reads, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation, in a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. See, this is the right relationship with God. The Lord wants us to be in a right relationship with Him. However, it was the Lord who gave and the devil who took away. But the Lord gave again in the book of Job, the first chapter. In the 21st verse, it reads, I came naked from my mother's womb, he said, and I shall have nothing when I die. The Lord gave me everything I had, and they were his to take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, sin destroys. You will find true prosperity and right living. Nations fall because of improprieties. Families fall because of degradation. In Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter, the ninth verse, it reads, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. Dread and dismay are related to the inner man. If you are fearful of life, competition, good hard work, and problems, you cannot be prosperous. There are principles and truth that relates to prosperity that you must abide by to be prosperous. God does not create poor people. I said, God does not create poor people. Amen? Amen. In 1 Chronicles, the 22nd chapter, in the 13th verse, 
it reads, Then shall you prosper if you take heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Dread not, nor be dismayed. Seeking God brings prosperity. I remember when John and I had nothing, no job, no money coming in, but we kept seeking the Lord. We had nothing, we were poor. We're three little people, but we kept seeking God, and he has led us to prosperity, because I remember when we had nothing, zero. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as long as Uzziah saw God, hearing God, walking with God, living for God, and blessing others, God caused him to prosper. And people, if we will seek God and hear from God, walk with God, live for the Lord, and bless others, the Lord will also prosper us like he did Isaiah. In 2 Chronicles, the 26th chapter, in the 5th verse, it reads that he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. So let us confess from the Bible that naked we came into the world and naked we leave this world. What comes in between these two statements is very interesting. A man said, he was asked how much Howard Hughes left when he died. And he replied, he left it all. He couldn't take any of it with him. But what you do with your resources while you are living, will have to do with your destiny forever. Amen? Amen? I would use my resources to get so saved, to get the word of God out and bless others. This is seed sown to bring forth a harvest. Do you want a harvest this morning? Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I do. Every soul needs to be saved. He or she needs God more than food. So he or she can use their powers to do what God wants them to do. The Egyptians filled the tombs of the pharaohs with gold and rich ornaments, trying to get the prosperity of this world into the next only to have grave thieves steal it away. Only your relationship with God here makes you rich in the world to come. Now the North American Indians put corn and personal belongings into the tombs of their chiefs to use in their happy hunting grounds. All these things dissipated. And during this life, we should believe God for great prosperity, share it, and lay it up treasures in heaven. Now you may ask the question, does God bless persons? Go with me to the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, in the seventh verse. And let's talk about Abraham and prosperity. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto your seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And in Genesis, the 13th chapter, in the second verse, it reads that Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. See, this is what God wants for you. Make right decisions, have faith, and use your opportunities. We receive the blessings of Abraham by faith. We are his seed. And the Lord wants to bless us and make us rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. In Genesis, the 26th chapter, the 12th verse, talks about Isaac in prosperity. Then Isaac sold in the land and received in the same year in a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward 
and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. If you make right, good, and spiritual decisions and implement them, your enemies will wonder how you gained such prosperity. In Genesis, the 39th chapter, and the second verse talks about Joseph in prosperity. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. The Egyptians could see this. He had the right relationship with the environment. He spent his life blessing, helping, and loving others. And that's the key to when the Lord prospers you, the keeping prosperity flowing in your life. You have to remember to help others and love others and bless them, and the Lord will bless you. And I'm getting ready to close. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is talking about growth and prosperity. An amazing situation of prosperity had to do with a woman named Ruth. She was a Moabitess, a heathen who worshipped idols. She married into a family from Bethlehem and became a widow. When her mother-in-law decided to return home, Ruth said she would go with her. Naomi instructed Ruth how to conduct herself and find a husband. Ruth married into a prosperous family and became the grandmother of David, one of the greatest kings of Israel. Ruth was a foreigner. She came to possess the land. She came poor and became wealthy and gained in status. In this land, you can be an immigrant from anywhere and it has prosperity for you. So the question is, does God prosper people. Yes, he does. If you will walk in his ways and do his commandments and do his word, the Lord will not only prosper you financially, but he'll prosper you in every area of your life. That is true prosperity, having a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, because we all are sinners, and he said, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, if you believe in your heart and say with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, you shall be saved. So pray this prayer with Word of Life Ministries. Say, dear God in heaven, God in heaven. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive, me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. I believe you died for me. And rose again. And rose again. And come and live in my heart. Come into my and heart. cleanse me from all of my sins. From all of my sins. And stand easy. Welcome to the family of God. Now, Heavenly Father, as we prepare to leave your house this afternoon, Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, and ask you to give your people a victorious week. Father, let no weapon that's formed against them prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against them, they shall condemn. Because my righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And Father, I thank you that because they fear you, the fear of the Lord tendeth the life, and that they shall abide satisfied, and shall not be visited with evil.